Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. I'm having a great one today. I am pleased to announce that at long last we have completed one of the mountains, or at least the exterior stone part of one of the mountains. There is still a lot of detail left to put into this thing, but if we go up into the air like so, this whole section here is basically complete as far as the structure of it goes. We still need to add more details like we have on this side. I still want to add a whole bunch of snow, some variation in stone types, and that kind of thing, some trees and grass and that kind of stuff. We will be doing that in a future episode, a kind of detail pass on this mountain. But as it exists right now, mountain is pretty much closed off, which is very exciting. Obviously, there is still a lot left to do, on this mountain range, but we have a couple of slopes already taking shape out here. Aside from the one that we built on the front side, we also have this one here, which travels down from a higher spot in the mountain and will probably end up somewhere around here. And we also have a smaller slope that I think is going to start around the side here, where there's a grass patch there, and then we're going to have that curve downwards towards the ground somewhere over there. So things are taking shape, my friends, and today we are going to briefly take a look inside of this thing to see what a mess I have made. Before we do that, I'm going to sneak up here to see if I have any torches or supplies for torches in any of the shulker boxes up here, which I guess I have some more wood that I can turn into sticks, but I will need to go and break down some coal because I've got a lot of lighting up to do underneath this mountain. I'll show you that in just a few seconds. Just going to break down half a stack of coal with the fortune pickaxe. Hopefully that should give us plenty of material to make torches out of and it's really making me wish there were some better options for area lighting in Minecraft because the underneath of this mountain is a huge area but torches are probably going to be the most cost effective thing to light this thing up with. I could bring in sea lanterns or something if I wanted to but I think torches are also more thematically appropriate for this area. Now let me get these together, arrange those in a stack. Yep, there we go. Okay, let's go light up this mountain. So I have left two entrances into the mountain which are relatively secluded. Up here at the top I figured we could actually have have the ski route go into a cave in the mountain here and you can kind of get a glimpse already at exactly how dark it is in there or alternatively we can come down here and there is a cave set into this hillside which I incorporated into the structure of the mountain which we can go down into and once you get through here you will see what I mean in terms of mobs. Yep we have a horde down here it looks like and uh, let's try and do our best to light up a few areas of this while we can but I have a feeling it's going to take a lot more passes with several more torches before we're able to complete this. This is one of the big problems with building large projects like this in the later stages of Minecraft. There really is no alternative for just lighting up the area. There isn't really any kind of way we can do this more efficiently than placing a few torches at a time. And it is very easy to quickly become overrun with the amount of mobs that are down here, especially if you're playing on hard and zombies spawn reinforcements every time you hit one of them successfully. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult. We're going to have to forego some of the snow layers and stuff that I've already placed around here. And I imagine some of those are going to melt thanks to the torches. But unless we decide to make some kind of feature out of the caves down here, we're probably not going to need all that much lighting down here in the first place. This is really just for my own peace of mind. And some of you are probably thinking, why not turn this into a mob spawner? You've basically got a mob spawner built in here. And the problem, of course, with that approach is that <laughs> the mob spawners that we have built in the past very much require a controlled area of stuff spawning. So you are looking to spawn things in as small an area as possible so you can minimize the amount of work you have to do collecting those mobs together and causing them to die by whatever means, whether that's a player kill or a free fall drop or something like that. And unfortunately, it's just not possible to contain that amount of mobs in this area without doing what we're doing right now, which is to light up the interior and make sure there's only one dark space in this entire thing. So that's not what we're going to do with these mountains. These mountains are large largely speaking, going to be left hollow, and I'll be surprised if I take the effort to light up absolutely all of them. I just wanted to do this one as a quick example. But I am already close to a stack of torches used. I am absolutely hounded by zombies, creepers, spiders, and all kinds of nastiness in here. Yep, that's one full stack gone, and I have barely made a dent. So that is a project we are probably going to be saving for another time. For now, I think I'm just going to make a quick escape and get on with what else I wanted to do in this video. Ah, there we go, fresh air. It's certainly nice to be out of there and out of the watchful eye of all of those zombies. So today we're going to be trying out another fox-based farm. We built a fox-based chicken 
chicken cooker in the last episode of Survival Guide, and today will be a little different, but not too much different. I'm going to make myself a sweet berry farm, probably once again over here in the village. I like the idea of having like a juice bar or something like that, a place where you can get some fresh fruit, and I like the idea of having a farm inset into the floor of this juice bar so that you can see the foxes working, because foxes will actually automatically harvest sweet berries for you under the right conditions. So I'm going to grab a couple of things. We're going to have to go hunting for foxes once again, but once we find them, we can put them to good use in a sweet berry farm design. If you're wondering how this fox-based chicken cooker we designed last time around is going, by the way, it's gone pretty well. I have not changed anything about the fox's sword. Some people were suggesting giving it a looting sword or an unbreaking or mending sword, and there are a few reasons why I'm not doing that. For a start, when a fox kills a chicken with a looting sword, it has the potential to drop lots of chicken and potentially lots of feathers as well. And in that case, sometimes the fox can pick up the second chicken before it gets sucked into the hopper. It might be slightly faster to do this with a hopper minecart here instead of a hopper. You might be able to guarantee that the chicken gets picked up more quickly, but if you just have a hopper underneath here like we did in this design just to not overcomplicate things, a looting sword might cause two chicken to drop, in which case the fox might have a chance to eat one of the chicken before it gets disappeared into the hopper, before it gets collected by the machine, and therefore it has a chance to drop the sword. Now, in good time, the fox will eat the chicken and the sword will be picked up again, but sometimes if it has a regular supply of chicken like that, it can cause the sword to despawn. Foxes are kind of random in exactly when they eat. So to save on overcomplicating things, even though this thing would provide a much higher yield of chicken if we gave it a looting three sword, I think given that it's already produced six or seven stacks of chicken here, it's doing pretty well on its own without the need to give it a looting sword. As for mending and unbreaking, as far as I can tell, according to what the Minecraft wiki says on this subject, foxes do not decrease the durability of tools or items they are using because effectively they're still just attacking the chickens, it's just that the sword in their mouth happens to be an extra bonus, it's not necessarily like they are using the tool in the same way that the player would. And so, Unbreaking is completely unnecessary to have on that sword, and mending wouldn't be necessary either because no durability is increasing, but also when the fox kills a chicken, the chicken isn't dropping any XP, because XP only drops when the mob is killed either by a player or by a wolf the player has tamed, and this fox most definitely does not count as either of those. But the sweet berry farm we're going to make is going to be a much simpler thing, and I think I'm actually going to remove the dividing wall in this hexagonal building. Is it hexagonal? No, octagonal. This octagonal building here. What I want to do is build a sweet berry farm underneath the floor and we're going to turn this into a juice bar kind of restaurant type of place where people could come in and get a drink and underneath the floor we're going to have a glass floor where you're going to be able to look down and see the sweet berry farm in action as though the juice you are drinking comes from sweet berries that are harvested naturally by foxes which doesn't necessarily sound like the most appetizing thing in the world but hey this is minecraft we can suspend our disbelief a little bit okay so i'm going to dig out a nine by nine area in the center of this octagonal building. I wanted it to be 8x8 initially so that we could just use a stack of sweet berries to grow a stack of bushes, but then I remembered this is an odd numbered build, so it's going to look a little bit strange having this thing slightly offset. We're going to have a 9x9 area down here, and the farm can really be any shape or size you like as long as you are willing to run minecart rails with minecart hoppers underneath, so anything super large is probably going to suffer from the problem of having lots of minecarts running at once, which might cause a little bit of lag or just be kind of noisy and you might not want to deal with that. So a 9x9 square in the center of this seems to fit the bill to me. I might have to reposition it slightly here and there. Yeah, I figure about this far down should work pretty well. We're going to have a layer of grass up the top here, but we're going to put some minecarts and minecart rails above that. So let me take out the redstone box and see how much rail I have. That probably won't quite be enough, but did I have a rail box in here somewhere? I feel like, yep, yeah, that seems like something sensible I would have done a while ago. Plenty of powered rail in there. Perfect. Okay, this whole plan is working out for me splendidly. So across the middle of here, we're going to place something that we can use as a power source. I'm just going to use redstone blocks for this since I have them with me. And putting those in place made me realize I'd only made this nine by eight. There we go. Widen it one more so we can get nine in there. Perfect. Okay, and along this edge here, we're going to set a row of nine 
hoppers, probably all facing into a single chest over there that we can collect the berries from. We'll have our output chest over here for now, but potentially in future we could change that into a dropper that's going to pipe the berries up via a water column or something like that so that the uh, juice bar has its own kind of water flowing kind of maybe the berries are infusing the water with the juice or something like that and that's how you get potions or something we could sell potions in here anyway not to worry about that for now we're going to grab a few of our powered rails and create minecart tracks that just span the length of this area here and on top of that we're going to be building a row of grass blocks where we're going to be growing our sweet berries so this right here is our platform i might want to add another row of hoppers underneath these rails here just to make the item pick up a little bit better but for now we're just going to cover this whole thing over and we can sort that out a little bit later on if we need to we can always dive in here using that crawl mechanic that we have with elytra or trap doors and make a few repairs if necessary in fact leaving a little access route down here is probably going to be a good idea because we'll need to place all of the hopper minecarts and stuff in the near future anyway for now though we're going to place a bunch of sweet berries in here we can grow these with bone meal and hopefully we should end up with enough berry bushes at the end of that to fill out this entire area bearing in mind of course that berry bushes are potentially going to damage the player so try to stay out of them while you're placing these there we go filled up about two-thirds of the way while we're waiting for the rest of these to grow i'm going to go and find something to build the walls of this out of because we want to make it look like the foxes are well looked after in here and having them in a room with just stone walls and dirt everywhere doesn't seem like the greatest idea there we go a bit of stripped acacia wood regular acacia logs and sea lanterns down there for a bit of light and this is looking a lot better one important factor is that we are going to have to have the roof of this thing covered in glass because the foxes will need to have direct access to the sky i mean they don't strictly speaking need this but during the day which is when i expect this farm will be the most operational considering how frequently i sleep around here to avoid snowfall the foxes will seek shelter underneath blocks and start to nap meaning they won't be running around collecting all of the sweet berries from these bushes and therefore the farm will not function so it is important to make sure that the foxes have direct access to the sky so this right here is going to be floored with glass for the patrons to be able to walk around on and above that we're going to have a skylight for this whole thing so that patrons can look down from whatever upper balcony area we have and so the foxes do not spend half of the day sleeping and now with the last few sweet berry bushes filled in it's time to go and find ourselves some more arctic foxes there are a few of them patrolling around the area and we could bring some regular foxes in from a tiger but i feel like we may as well go looking for them in the surrounding environment i've got a couple of leads and i've got some spare sweet berries so we're going to take this much the same as we did the chicken farm fox search so let's go find ourselves some foxes one fox successfully gathered let's see if we can coax it through the wall here fantastic and we just need to nudge it down here into this area with the sweet berries i'm going to temporarily block off this part here so it doesn't end up going down into my little access hatch in fact we could probably just dig that one down one block over to make sure that the fox doesn't escape and i'm fairly certain unless a chicken or a uh, rabbit gets in here somehow the fox shouldn't be able to jump out of this pit even though they can jump pretty high i don't think they do that unless there is prey nearby which should be fine for us and you'll notice that unlike the player foxes are not damaged or even slowed down by moving through sweet berry bushes they can wander around here of their own accord and sooner or later they will start to pick up the sweet berries from the bushes one of them will end up inevitably in the fox's mouth but these berry bushes when they are fully grown will actually drop several berries at a time meaning that what you end up with is an excess of berries laying on the ground that can easily be collected up by hopper minecarts once we find fox number two i will have a go at breeding them together and the objective here is to get around eight foxes for an area like this i'm thinking at least one fox per row give or take so nine might be an ideal number as long as we have a bunch of foxes there we go you saw it there harvested the berries and a couple of them are now laying on the ground down there as items and the one berry that ended up in the fox's mouth will inevitably get eaten it'll get hungry again and it'll go back to searching for some more sweet berries which of course are pretty much everywhere but in order to breed a couple together we will of course need another fox so i'm gonna have a quick look around here to see if i can find a second one i really wish that i had bred a couple of foxes before i put one of them in the chicken cooker but unfortunately that's just the way it goes i wasn't really planning ahead there's one down there napping under the tree i should be able to swoop down on it like so and just attach it to a lead perfect that went as well as could be expected the only real problem so far with getting these guys around has been rabbits or chickens getting in the way and the foxes going after them but hopefully once we have them underneath the glass floor in here they should not try and path 
find two chickens or rabbits that pop up naturally in the area and will remove anything in there that could potentially spawn rabbits too close to them anyway. And it is quite convenient for me that the food required to breed foxes is also sweet berries. So all we need to do is make sure we feed sweet berries manually to each of these foxes, including Disco Fox over here, and we should hopefully be able to breed them up and start them producing some kids. Unfortunately for me, their hitboxes are actually kind of small and we can't really reach them through the sweet berry bushes. So I'm just gonna stand over here with some sweet berries in hand hand and hopefully they should come up to me and want to breed there we go let's take out a couple of bushes here yes there we go breed the two of you together we should get ourselves a little arctic fox kit oh how lovely perfect and then once we close this off again they should be trapped down there and we can continue breeding them up as necessary so we now have eight foxes working in here and i'm pretty sure the younger ones are eating more frequently than the adults just in their haste to grow up but these guys are actually pretty adorable i've been watching them work for a little while now and as you'll see, they will occasionally drop single berries on the ground like that. It seems like more often than not, they will pick up the berries if there's just one berry on the bush. You'll notice there are a couple of differences between a fully grown and fully decked out berry bush and one of the ones that's only got one set of berries on it. And those will drop fewer sweet berry items. But with the ratio of foxes to bushes in here, hopefully half of the field here should have plenty of time to grow an additional layer of berries, which will mean more items will drop. And we can activate the row of hopper minecarts, which I've now got set up down here. And here in the camera account view, you can see what I've got set up. So there are a row of hopper minecarts all the way along the side here with powered rails underneath them, a single rail in front of those. And then they hit the main bank of powered rails where they will travel back and forth nice and easily. All I have to do is pull this lever here activating this row of redstone dust which I've placed adjacent to the powered rails but not adjacent to the hoppers underneath so anything that's gathered up by the hopper minecarts can already make its way down into the chest down here. And so hopefully with this family of foxes working for us, we should just be able to switch this lever on and we should start to see a few sweet berries coming in there in the fullness of time. Now, the only thing that remains to be done is to make sure we've got a glass roof over the top of this thing so that we can walk around on top of it. And I like the idea of having white glass here because these are arctic foxes. So they're going to be stuck in there for the foreseeable future, but they are going to have a whale of a time snacking on berries all day long and hopefully farming a few of them for me as well. And hopefully now we should be able to see occasionally, yep, I think you saw it there with the sweet berries that dropped from that bush. You might occasionally see a fox snap up a sweet berry, but occasionally they will rid one of these plants of its berries. You'll see a couple laying on the ground and we should hopefully be able to see those getting caught up in the hopper minecarts. There's one there. Yep, looks like that one got taken by the minecarts as well. Occasionally, they'll take a berry from one of these plants in the center, and hopefully, they should only end up eating one or two of them. The rest will end up in our hopper minecarts, and hopefully, we should see a few of those in the chest when we come down here and take a look. I had a few in here already, but there, there were about 16 in there before, so we are now a few berries richer. I'll pop the whole result in here, and I think maybe I'll AFK for, I'd say, about half an hour just to see exactly exactly how much we get from this. Hey folks, welcome back. So I've been AFK for a little while here. Let's take a quick look at how many berries we have in here with the hopper minecarts turned off. That is three stacks and 10. Now remember we probably put about half a stack in there beforehand. So we're looking at just under three stacks in half an hour or roughly I would guess about six stacks per hour, depending on how hungry the foxes are of course, but they seem to be happily going about their business here. And that would mean we could generate a pretty decent amount of sweet berries. Now, why exactly exactly would you want sweet berries you may ask well as it turns out sweet berries are the final trade for a villager butcher you can trade sweet berries to them for emeralds meaning if you set up a farm like this you could expect to get probably about four or five stacks of emeralds per hour out of the trades, presuming that you had cured that butcher from a zombie villager and unlocked all of its trades up to master level. And so I feel like this is actually a pretty valuable farm to have in your early retinue, especially considering how relatively resource light it is. Give or take the fact that we're using lots of hopper minecarts and stuff down here, it might not quite be an early game farm, but it's certainly a nice one to set up, nice and organic, I guess, with the foxes farming the berries for you and I kind of like this. It's certainly something that we haven't explored in the series before, so I figured it was going to be nice to give it a go, and maybe I will recruit one or two of the villagers from the Arctic village that we have over there 
as butchers to trade with in this establishment. But the other great thing is that this farm is going to be running in the background, much the same as my chicken farm and my cobblestone farm, as we continue to work on the mountain project, which you'll kind of see in the distance has had a couple of slices of mountain added to it since the beginning of this video, and I plan to continue that all through this month over on my Twitch channel, which if you're not following over there, twitch.tv slash pixelriffs, a link will be in the description if you want to come and hang out while we build these mountains. It's pretty chill. <laughs> Most of the time we are just placing stone and chatting to people, but it's nice to spend a little bit of time talking to you folks from the community. So that is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. We're going to decorate this place sometime later, I think. But for now, really happy with this little fox sweetberry farm, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like on it if you did, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.